So my research is about the therapeutic potential of ayahuasca for people with bipolar disorder, otherwise known as manic depression. These are pre-clinical investigations, which means I'm not actually giving anybody any ayahuasca in my PhD, but I'm trying to answer as many questions as possible that would lead to a protocol for a clinical trial in the future. I'd like to thank ICS for always being open-minded enough to, uh, to, to welcome the discussion of such a controversial topic. So let's make this something you can personally relate to via these people with bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar disorder has a massive statistical correlation uh, with creativity and also a massive statistical correlation with suicide risk. So all of these bipolar people either died from suicide or from some drug uh, overdose in the in a vain attempt to self-medicate. Now, one of the difficulties of treating bipolar disorder is that the currently available pharmaceutical antidepressants like Prozac, they either do not work at all, or if they do anything, then they overstimulate the bipolar brain and escalate bipolar people into a manic episode. So it's very difficult to treat from a chemical basis and while there are some uh, currently available pharmaceutical drugs like lithium, those notoriously ruin the things that are the most important for bipolar personalities like these. Although there are some bipolar people that respond well to them, and that's fine with me, I'm interested in helping people like this, uh, who basically hate taking the pharmaceutical pills because they ruin things like emotional sensitivity, libido, creativity, and spiritual awareness. So a key question in this context is what about this antidepressant medicine called ayahuasca? Now we can say, thanks to Draulio and Fernanda and Kim Van Orso and all these people doing clinical trials with ayahuasca, this hard work is demonstrated scientifically uh, very strongly suggested at least that, there, that ayahuasca is an effective antidepressant. So the question is, is it, could it be an antidepressant which works for bipolar people without overstimulating them into a manic episode? Well, the current expert opinion is the answer to that is no. So if you ask your average ayahuasca expert or your average ayahuasca ceremony facilitator whether it's safe for a bipolar person to drink ayahuasca, they will say no. And in fact, most bipolar people, if they are honest, when they fill out a, uh, an application form to do an ayahuasca ceremony, they will be excluded uh, from the basis of a duty of care to prevent them having a manic episode, right? Now that is... Uh, based in some real information, such as this case report in an academic journal, and such as, for example, the Temple of the Way of Light, they used to include bipolar people in their ceremonies, but then they had some really bad uh, experience of bipolar people going manic, and they had to stop and exclude them from then on. S similar situation in Nihu Aurora. And... Uh, numerous other cases that I've been documenting. Now, I very much acknowledge and appreciate the, 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 the honourable duty of care concerns that these experts have, but I'm also saying that this is a somewhat dogmatic uh, position that's not based in any scientific uh, research, and furthermore, we've got a general situation where bipolar people are not only excluded from using what I consider to be the best antidepressant in the world, but also excluded from even any research in the entire field of psychedelic science. Now, the scientist's argument for this has got to do with this 5-HT2A receptor, which is the, socket, the sockets in the brain where the classic hallucinogens plug into. So the argument goes, well, LSD and mescaline 
cause mania in bipolar people, and I agree with that, and uh, that's very well documented, I agree. Now, psilocybin, to a lesser extent, also can cause mania in bipolar people. Serotonin, if you have too much, for example, if you're on taking Prozac, you can go manic. So the, the, the assumption, the extrapolation, is that therefore DMT will do the same thing because it plugs into the same socket. Well, sorry, this is wrong, all right? So this PhD started off with my own personal story. So I have bipolar disorder. I've had a, quite a severe and treatment-resistant case. I'm also a creative personality. These are self-portraits of how I used to feel before I discovered ayahuasca. Now, at one point I was in a decade in the psychiatric system, I was prescribed 17, one after another, 17 pharmaceutical drugs, and uh, although lithium and lamotrigine were somewhat helpful, they all had really bad side effects and they were intolerable. And I went on a search, tried a lot, lot, of, lot of herbs as well, and then 13 years ago I discovered ayahuasca, and I've been able to live without any need of pharmaceuticals ever since. Generally speaking, whether I'm in an indigenous ceremony or a Santo Daime ceremony, I experience what I call humble happiness, which is an, an antidepressant benefit uh, without an inflated ego, without a manic episode. And that I've been healing profoundly uh, on this journey. Now, I wouldn't say it's been 100% successful. There have been some very difficult situations, and I've been investigating those. Now, I discussed this with a psychiatry department, and they gave me a scholarship to research whether this could help other bipolar people. Now, I'm going to jump straight to some results. Now, so far, I've found over 60 other, bi other bipolar people who have drunk ayahuasca basically against the rules, uh, and this is the first impression, this isn't the final impression, this is the first impression of what it looks like is going on. Now, we have out of the, this 62 people, 38 positive. Now, this is a, just a really simple question. I'm not talking about spirituality here. I'm not talking about set and setting so much. I'm just talking about chemically, does the ayahuasca help with the manic depressive symptoms without making it worse, without causing manic episodes? Now, 38 positive, 10 variable, 40 negative. Now, when I say variable, I mean that sometimes they have a positive experience, but they have a negative experience in another ceremony with a different batch of tea. So then I'm going, all right, we've got to figure this out, and I've been digging and analysing the situation, and I've come up with a lot of uh, scientific explanations and discovered, well, I argue... Well, I'm certain that actually a lot of these negatives are what I call false negatives, yeah? As in, something's gone wrong at the ceremony, but it's not the ayahuasca's fault. Look at the MAOIs. So monoamine oxidase inhibitors are, the two of them, harmine and harmaline, in the vine of ayahuasca. Now, they are known to trigger manic symptoms in and of themselves in bipolar brains. Now, harmine and harmaline, they remain active in the body, for many hours after the ceremony. So if someone has drunk ayahuasca one night, then the next day they're still going to have this inhibition happening. So what happens is if they drink ayahuasca the next day, they've got a build-up of the inhibition already in the system. And if that goes on for like two or three or four nights, then they've got their, their MAOI levels are really, really high. So we've had, I've, there's four, no, five... Uh, instances of bipolar people drinking ayahuasca one night, perfectly fine, but then the second or third or fourth night, they go manic. And that was actually what happened in the documented case that I, in the slide before. So, and of course, if this, they're not getting enough sleep in those four nights as well. So that's that which causes uh, many in itself. Now, another chemical... Uh, situation is that MAOIs chemically interact and amplify the effects of other psychoactive substances like psilocybin, mescaline, THC, nicotine, and so on. Now, so we have one case of a bipolar person. Um, 
you know, going uh, manic, they were fine one night and then the next day they took a bunch of magic mushrooms and they went manic. Same with mescaline, same with hape, marijuana and so on. Now if I exclude these false negatives, then actually the results are, almost, are over three quarters positive. Now then I look at, but then I've continued to analyze what's going on because sometimes ayahuasca is not helpful for bipolar people and it makes things worse. But then I, then I realized, well, ayahuasca is not always the same. So sometimes a lot of people are drinking fermented ayahuasca, which means it contains alcohol, and, and that is a problem. Every single time a bipolar person drinks fermented ayahuasca, there's a problem. I can explain how to fix this if you want. Talk to me later. Another thing is that ayahuasca is not a single, is not, is not consistent either. There's massive variation in the four ingredients in ayahuasca, it, for example, in these, shown in these studies. Now, what's going on? You've got these four molecules that are all psychoactive, and depending on the way you cook the tea, the ratio of those four ingredients is highly variable, right? Now, that's partly because the plant materials used to make those is variable. They've got all these different names. They're different subspecies or different species or completely, like in the case, some people use Pegnum harmala to make a pseudo ayahuasca. They're, those are chemically different and they have chemically different results when you cook them. This is an issue because the harmala alkaloids will have a different effect on the different neurotransmitter systems in the brain. So harmony and harmaline push, they amplify noradrenaline, dopamine and serotonin in the brain, whereas tetrahydrohamine is only serotonergic. So if you have uh, tetrahydrohamine, you're basically pushing up the noradrenaline system too much, which is a real problem for bipolar people as well. Now, uh, just to make things even more complicated, when you cook the tea for a long time, the tetrahydrohamine oxidizes and becomes harmine. So the ratio between the SSRI content, the serotonin content, and the noradrenaline content of the tea changes the longer you cook it. And thanks to my colleague Halakasig from Estonia for this data. Now, what's going on with the DMT? Well, DMT is almost identical to serotonin. It's arguably an endogenous substance. And what does it do? Well, it, it, I have ev anecdotal evidence from 10 bipolar people who've experienced just DMT on its own without the MAOIs, and it's certainly not causing mania. In fact, if anything, it's got a mild antidepressant effect and a basically calming down effect, and you know, I would consider it more of a mood stabilizer. So where does, you now my explanation for this, by the way, is about the receptor binding time in the 5-HT2A receptor. So the LSD and mescaline, big molecules, they lock in in a complicated way and get stuck for hours in the 5-HT2A receptor, Whereas DMT is small, simple, short acting, and so what I'm saying is the tendency to escalate into mania is not about how intense the hallucinogen is, it's for how long it's bound in the receptor and stimulating the brain, right? Where does all this lead? Well, what I'm now trying to do is develop a, an ideal cooking uh, technique for making a particular medical ayahuasca that's customized for bipolar people with a specific, an ideal ratio of harmine, harmaline, tetrahydrohamine, and DMT. The way I'm doing that is I've been going to lots of ayahuasca ceremonies, drinking the tea, I'm my own guinea pig, and I uh, then freeze dry the samples and do chromatography on them. I'm also, I have a, 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 an electronic cooking machine, then I'm doing standardized cooking uh, of lots of different batches, subspecies, red, black, yellow, all the rest of it, of the tea to come up with a, uh, an ideal cooking technique. And what I hope to do is to use this 
ideal medical ayahuasca customised and uh, collaborate between psychiatry and the spiritual traditions of ayahuasca and have a sacred ayahuasca healing ceremony protocol that can be tested in a clinical trial and help, hopefully, other people with bipolar disorder. Muchas gracias.